welcome to Oba Today Chronicles of a Nigerian Bride. <laughs> My name is Esther Sholari and today we will continue with the topic how to have your own kind of wedding. So, <laughs> let me talk about the, the thing I did that got many people talking. My low cuts. I have always loved the idea of being a different kind of bride. Um, I like fixing, I like ribbons, I like those things, right? But I just feel like, it, I don't know, I just feel like it makes it look different. I, okay, so I wanted something that was me. I wanted something that was natural in a very beautiful, sophisticated way. You know, I wanted no quotes. Now, this is a trick for those who want to be like me. <laughs> I'm not trying to create a movement though. I'm just I'm just saying like if you if you like the idea and you want to try it out. Number one, don't tell many people. Keep it to yourself. Okay, no, number one is tell your spouse. So I told Oga, um, bro, what do you think? I want to cut my hair for my wedding. Okay, so I've been on low cuts like the year before I cut my, my, my hair and um because I wanted to do this style, like I wanted it to be a little high, so I started growing it again. So people thought I was growing the hair for the wedding yeah they were right but not in the sense at which you know um they were thinking you know but i told him bro i like to be a local bride though how far is that oh, okay right, no, how are, it's okay so I, I i got his approval so then i spoke to my mom because i kind of felt why did i speak to mom i spoke to mom because i wanted my mom to be happy on my wedding day i mean i'm her only daughter so it will make sense for her to look at me and have a sense of you know you know anger or pain like okay she disrespected me so my mom's opinion mattered to me personally you know so i had to ask her she said babe do what you want to do it's fine so once i got those two people's approval every other person speak to my hands <laughs> so the rule is don't tell so many people keep it to yourself um i remember i was telling a particular person and she went eh you want to cut your hair la ye la ye la ye oh better go and fix why would you do low cost da, 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 da. how would you look like I'm like that's what I'm going to do. Guess what? When she saw the wedding pictures, she posted it and I wrote, "Love this look out. So do you see? See, the opinions of people don't count. Sincerely, the opinions of people do not count. So don't try to do it because Kilama saw what would people say. No, no. How would you? What would make you happy? Now the other thing I want to talk about. Is Still on this um, physical appearance is your makeup. I'm talking about this in a different dimension. I have gone for weddings whereby the makeup artist will say, No, it's my job. I'm going to fix eyelash. You see the eyelash long like this. And the person that did the makeup for has probably never done that kind of makeup before, has probably never used that kind of eyelash before. And the makeup artist will say, No, your lipstick must be popping. And the person is probably a very, you know, reserved, she doesn't like too much makeup kind of person. See, babe. It is your wedding. Hmm? I suggest it's just, of course, you know, all, 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 all of these I'm talking about now about today are just my own personal experiences. I'm not trying to say you must do it exactly the way I did it. I'm just, you know, I suggest if you want to do your makeup, if you want to do your wedding, eh, have a picture of the kind of makeup you want. As in, go on Instagram, search. I want my face to look like this. I want my eyelash to be this length. I want my lipstick to be like this. So it's it streamlines, um, it curtails the potency of your makeup artist to want to just do anything she wants. Do you understand? So by the time you look at it, you as in you will send it to the makeup artist before the day, not on that wedding day. Babe, this is what I want to do. Can you do it? Yes. Snap, send me the pictures of the eyelash you want to use for me, because it's not everybody that likes, <clears throat> you know. So let there be that kind of conversation. That's one, two. <clears throat> I beg you, I'm personally, <clears throat> why not? Personally, I am very particular about makeup. So, um, do not use a makeup artist you have never used before. Now, some people have done it though and it's worked out well for them, but I think it's a major risk. Sincerely, if you want to use a makeup artist, ensure that that person does your bridal, um, your pre wedding shoot makeup at least, or your introduction makeup. As in, let the person do makeup for you before the wedding day. That way you can um, see. Okay, so when I use her makeup, and when she's going to just enter the sun, because sometimes you do the makeup, by the time you enter the sun, everything, because probably she, she is bad 
products. Do you understand? So please take your time. You can go to the person, do your makeup, go for a wedding, see how the makeup was on you. Did you like it? If you like it, then book the person, babe, let me go do my wedding makeup. This is it. This is the picture of what I want. This is how I want to look. That way it's, it's reduced because I've seen instances whereby the person say, ha, ah, no, one you ba, ha, ah, and the makeup was like, check a shade, I read your day. I feel like, no, no. I'm please makeup artist. I, okay, I, should I say this? I think it's not so cool when you do that. I think you are disrespecting the personality of the bride. If she gives you the opportunity to really, you know, play and do all you want to do, please do. But if she's reserved, can you respect her reservations and just work with it? I've seen nude makeups that are absolutely beautiful. I've seen elaborate makeups that are absolutely beautiful. It's just about you know your blending them and also. But please respect the personality of the bride. I I, I think it's going to go in a whole wrong way. Now the other thing I want to talk about is um about your physical appearance. Your shoes, wear comfortable shoes. Wear it. As you see me, I come off my shoe and I wore my slippers. Slippers in the more woman sister, my gown covered it well, so you cannot know. They say, How would you be wearing slippers? Uh, excuse me, you say your money I will use to buy another shoe. Thanks. So, wear a comfy shoe. I, I had a very comfortable shoe, but because I was going for the reception, I didn't want to rock. I have to change it. In fact, if you have the money, get yourself the sneakers. Wear your sneakers and be, and be rocking. Change them. Um, what other thing about your physical appearance? Jewelry. If you're not a jewelry person, don't let anybody force you into using jewelry. If you like to use jewelry, use. If you don't like to use, don't use. If your church is such that permits that that does not permit these things, well, I suggest you respect them because you're doing your wedding there. Then when you go for your reception, you can check it up. <laughs> I've had someone to do that. Now the other thing that we did that was very peculiar to us that reflected us as as um as humans <laughs> was no ashrebi. It was our own kind of wedding. You know, society has been making you feel like you have to do it this way. It's a lie. As long as there is no scripture and verse backing it up, my brother, it is all the plans and the cultures of men. All the inventions and creativity of men. So don't allow anybody to bobo you into this is how it should be done. There's nothing like that. Well, there is, but to a certain extent. Do you understand? So, we decided we're not going to use Ashebi and for legit reasons. Um, over time, I have seen that many people use Ashebi to side fund money. Like, the money for the entire wedding, they'll get it from the Ashebi. The money for the food you are eating, the water you are drinking, is inside the Ashebi. So, as you are paying the 15k for the cloth, my brother, they are shop your money. I, I didn't like that. I felt it wasn't fair. Okay, I felt that um, a lot of people come with what they have. So we decided to choose a, co um, a color code instead. The husband's family. And it wasn't just my own decision. My mom believed in that she had that same sentiment. Uh, my husband, his family had that, si that same sentiment. So it made it very easy. But I know there are some families whereby it might be a little difficult to, to achieve that. But the most important thing is, if you have your own, don't just me. And it saves you stress. I didn't have to be going to the market up and down to go and look for clothes. I know there are some people that are, yeah, by the way, there are people that can help you get your shabu. They'll be in charge, you give them the list, they are the ones, I think they are the ones you won't have to send the money to, and they sort it all out for you if you don't want to do the stress. So it's a business for some people. But for me, I do not think it is necessary to do a shabu, personal opinion. I just feel like give people liberty to wear what they have. And people were super excited. Do you know how many people walked up to me or my mom or Solario and his parents and they were like, ah ah. Hey, my shabby, me only wear it. Was it bad? Like, they're basically saying it's been a while since they attended a wedding where there was not a shabby. Imagine. So, people have made it a standard like you have to be a shabby. Who said? Scripture and verse. Once there's a scripture and verse to it, skip. So, the next thing is my bridal train. I like this particular aspect, and um, I think you will learn a lot from this aspect. Mm -hmm. The choice of your bridal train is very important. Like, this topic is so dear to my heart. <laughs> the choice of your bridal train is so freaking important. Here is why. One, they are the closest people, um, that, they, are the, they are the people that will, be, that will be, they are going to stand to you, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, the point I'm trying to make is that you are, your bridal train is so important because they are the closest people around you on your wedding day. And you need positive vibes only.
positive, not just any kind. Positive vibes only. So it's not just anybody. Um, I see that some people like to choose from people younger than them. They'll be like, ah, no, no, it's chain. Our model man, she, let's see the sons of children. They'll not go and pick maybe their church members and stuff that they don't have a solid connection with. Those ones cannot gel with you because well, you don't even have a relationship with them. Like you're not so close to them. Some will go and pick from their distant cousin that they are not close to. No, no, don't do that. If you want to pick a train, ensure you pick from your friends. Your train must be your friend. You see, when I close my eyes to talk like this, it means the thing is inside it. <laughs> no, but seriously, your train must be your friend. As the people that you guys bond with, you guys are friends. You guys can be your absolute self because you need them. Wedding day has pressure. Yeah, you get your stress. You don't want to surround yourself with people that are just. Oh yeah, come and dance now. Oh yeah, come and take picture now. Show your teeth now. Laugh now. Don't, don't. I've seen it happen. Many people do it. They, they pick from people that they are not friends with, and it messes up their day. So how did we select our bridal train? By the way, we had my bridal train was lit. Like the energy of the girls of the guys. Ah, Mado. <laughs> it was awesome. I loved it. Okay, so how did you pick our bridal train? Um, first and foremost, how many people did you do we want on the train? Pick that number. We want this number of persons on the train. Okay, so who do we want on the train? It was a little easy for Larry because you know he just. Bah, bah, bah. But for me, I. I have, I don't know, I find it a little difficult. Why? So, I know different people. <clears throat> and the question was, who do I want on the train? I wanted people that, um, the one I gel with, I wanted people that will be there to serve me. Like, serve me. Because that was what bridal training, as far as me, I'm concerned. I call it service. All the people I go for their wedding, I go there to serve. As you see me, I'm tying their shoe, doing their gaily, helping with their wristwatch, anything, anything I help them do. So, I believe bridal training is service. So, I'm like, who are those that can serve me? I had a particular friend that has a child. I'm like, if this girl is on my train, she has a child. She would, and her child is still very small. I think my child is just one year old. So she would want to, you know, birth the child and oh, she will have my time. I don't want. I had another one. I'm like, ah, this final, this bridal train thing, it gets more cost. Though. Will this person be able to afford it? Uh, and she will have to travel down and oh, does it make sense? No, I scrapped it. I had another one. I'm like, ah, this one is married though. Ah, this one has gone body to her husband. <laughs> I'll show you what she watches. When, when she sees this part, she's going to talk talking about her. <laughs> Sorry, babe. You know, and I'm like, ah, okay, so what do I want? So I want people that will be available, people that would love me enough to go the extra mile for me, and I picked. So I actually picked up my train, and I picked up a best lady. But somehow, no, I didn't pick up a best lady because I was, I have conflicting thoughts. Then I started to pray, Lord, what is it? What is it? What is it? So I had a direction to pick up the person that eventually became my best lady. Her name is Ewa Aloha Ojo, by the way. And, um, when I did, my there was just something about my train that was wrong. Like my best lady was fine. Like I had peace on that. So that's the thing. Peace of mind on every single thing is very important. I picked up my, my best lady and I was fine. But my train and my sister and Larry had to sit down. What is it about this train? And we started to pray. Spirit of God, reveal to us. Who should we remove? Who should we add? Who should we this? Who should we that? Holy Spirit, help us. We see what you see. We hear what you what you see to us. We like I think that took me an hour too. Then we finally concluded on the train. Even for him, we also had to pray about his train. And you know, we selected. So that was it. Sincerely, ah, I am so grateful to God that I picked the kind of train I picked. Sincerely. It was one of them that was supposed to come. Do you know that? That, that she was on the train, but she was like one of the people that was supposed to on the train. She fell sick the night before. In fact, that's the best I wanted to do as best lady. She fell sick the night before. <laughs> and she came the morning of the wedding. And she was like, oh. So I'm like, oh wow, Lord, you did me a favor. So when God is leading you in a direction, don't be sentimental about it. It's not about your emotions. It's about you being directed by the Spirit of God. So, when you pray concerning your train, I know this is not popular 
you know but when you pray concerning your your trade the spirit of god himself would help you choose and he would choose people that would uplift your spirit by the way these other people also came oh, they came and they were there for me i don't lie you like they were there for me but my train was so important they were so joyful they were so excited and one of the things we prayed about was lord let there be an avalanche of joy upon everybody <laughs> Everybody say Esther. 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 Now this is another thing. I'm moving on to welfare. Hey, she has a lot of job contest. Hope you guys are getting blessed. Please let me know. Drop it if you think I'm, I'm making sense. You know, sometimes I'm doing video and be like, what am I making sense? But please drop it if you think I'm making sense. Okay, so I want to talk about welfare. For me, welfare for my train was very important. For the choice of the Ashebi. So, I chose for my train. I ensured they won it in. Why? Over time, I see that many people choose materials for the, the bridal train, the, the ladies especially, and they choose materials that they can't wear after that day. I've, I've been a uh, bridesmaid for someone. No, um, I've been on the train for someone, right? Whereby I had to throw the clothes away. It was satin. There's nothing I can use that thing for. Like, it's, I can't wear it. So, many people choose materials that people don't wear on a normal day. And they now use it to sew styles that you cannot even... See, if you wear it outside, they know, ah, you went for a wedding. This must be a wedding stuff. See, you... What am I saying? See, see, see. <laughs> but the point is, choose a material that after that day they can wear anywhere they can wear to church they can wear to parties don't choose a material that you might be where everybody knows they went for a wedding so for me i chose lace for the ladies and i chose agbada for the guys if you see the way they wear eh, slay. where they will stay for the night so i have gone for weddings where um you are like 20 in a room you are sleeping you are i've gone for a wedding where this was how i slept i i mean my hands couldn't come down i just laid on the floor and i was like this it's terrible see if you want to plan a wedding one of the major things you must you must take into consideration is a good hotel room or rooms you can just you can get more than a room don't say ah no be a oh, no if you want to say me a oh, tell your friends see it is only one room and the room cannot take more than nine people or eight or five or whatever my room was just five in the room with the makeup artist the other because we booked two rooms so it was just five it was like ten it was fair i had other people that wanted to come i told them there is no space there is no space although ours was even because our hotel um hotel management insisted that they didn't have more than a set they didn't want to have more than a certain number but when i got to the room i'm sure my my brides my maids i'm sure my train slept well like i am sure they slept very well because there's something when there's there's something about when there's ac there's good light you know good bed and you, when you wake up you'll be happy you'll be happy all right you get to the room and you're like in your head you're calculating um uh, where i go sleep Yes, I know what it is about sacrifice. I know you should be willing to go the extra mile. Part of going the extra mile is, you know, sleep anywhere. You know, even if it's inside the toilet. But for you as the bride, make them a priority. The next thing is food. You see, for your train, I beg, I beg. And I'm going to beg you. Ensure the eat. Pack it with your food. 
as in, for me, I, I had someone in charge of them to ensure they were fed. They had their table. They had, you know, it was reserved. Not that they would come, they would be looking for where to sit. So it's, it's just part of you um, being very conscious of the fact that these are the people closest to you and they deserve to be treated well. Because however they feel emotionally, it will spill over. It will spill over. It will affect you. And we prayed for our train. Okay, I've said that before, but I mean we actually prayed for them. And one of the prayers we prayed for was, Lord, let, let them be filled with joy. Lord, help us to be emotionally balanced that day. Help us all to be spiritually discerning. Um, and even, even in the choice of who to sleep with you in the room, you have to also be discerning. So for me, I had spoken in tongues. I had, Lord, I want the right people. So somehow they just came. You know, then... When you when you tell them to pay for the materials, please don't exploit them. For me, oh, I, I'm not saying generally, but for me, I had to come come in for some people because I knew that okay, this is the amount you currently afford. How much can you afford? I'll meet you halfway. I don't think you should be making money off them. No, no, no. I think that's wrong. I think you're supposed to meet them halfway. And if there is change, maybe you, you see that okay, there's a little change here or there. Spend that money. Use that money to buy something for them. Give them gifts. Don't make it look like you are going to do the wedding, so you have to you have to chop them dry. No, no, is it chop them dry? Drink them dry. <laughs> but the point is, ensure always, always ensure that you give them absolutely good welfare. In fact, my photographer took them portrait pictures. Every single one of them had portrait pictures. So you just have to be very intentional. Okay, I didn't I wasn't the one that told him to do that. But I felt super excited about it because it made me feel like these people would love this the pictures. Like and their makeup. Eh? For me. What am I saying for me? I've said for me. I'm saying CC in this particular podcast. This podcast is very I said podcast. <laughs> in this particular video, this video is very dear to my heart, though, sincerely. Okay, um another thing is um the styles. I didn't choose any style for them. Why? Are we doing choreography? Wear what you want to wear. Give them permission to look their best. Look your best. Dress. To See, I told them. They, 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 they were telling me that. Ah, if they look their best and they are finer than me, go. I said, if you are finer than me, it simply means I was not finer than you before the wedding. That's one. Two. And even if, paraventure, you are finer than me, the point is, I am still the bride. I am the one getting married, not you. I am the one Larry is getting married to, not you. So it doesn't matter. Look your best. Then people say, ah, no, 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 it doesn't matter than the bride. It is just self-esteem issues. Let us deal with it. So, bride to be, please allow your friends to sleep. Allow them to look their best. Okay, so what else we want to talk about? Uh, okay, let's talk about makeup. Makeup. I had three makeup artists. One for me, one for my mom, one for my train. And that was because my wedding was in one day. So I had engagement in the morning, I had church, I had reception. I knew I needed my girls to be ready by 7. So I had to get someone else to do their makeup. So I cannot be saying, look your best, and I'll not give them a good makeup artist. And when I saw their work, when I saw my friend slay, made sense. Okay, next thing, strictly by invitation. Um... Funny enough, I didn't want a strictly by invitation wedding. I wanted people to come. I really I really did want people to. I really wanted people to come. But like I said, my husband's family is pretty large and she was like, if you don't do strictly by invitation, how you go go? It will be too large. So we had to just do it. And it was after the wedding I saw the significance. Okay, so one of the significance of doing or advantages of doing strictly by invitation is it helps you um, manage the people coming in fact that's like the major reason like it helps you manage so we knew uh, the entire um number of persons was was 800 500 for the groom's family because i said they are pretty large 300 for us so we knew we we're working with just 300 and we knew that yes you know some people would come in without card but at least it limited it to an extent so it helped us manage the audience one two it helped us limit the number of um bad vibes people you know when it is open to everybody so people don't like some people don't like you but they will come but when it's strictly meditation you are the ones giving all the cards so you are giving it to people that you really want them to come 
You understand? So bad vibes, you can eliminate it at least to a very large extent. Now, the, the third thing is it's actually cheap. It's the same. Because access cards are cheaper than normal invitation cards. So for us, for my side anyway, we just did few invitation cards, then plenty access cards. For the ones we did for them, because it's the bright family that does um, invitation cards in well i don't know if it's yoruba land though, but that was how it happened for us <laughs> so i really don't know if it's yoruba land anyway but for them they had more invitation cards and yeah it was just it was still okay really like it was still okay they still had more people to give invitation cards to this they had more people to give access cards to so the point is access cards are actually cheaper than invitation cards so you know what to think about it yeah now the other thing is that um it 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 helps you have a good event because it's not a case of oh ah in our head we are planning for 200 people then you now get to the wedding i have seen 500 it is a case of you are planning for 300 people the maximum you will see is 350 that one is too within the budget because most likely you would have planned for 350 really she understand so it really really helps you manage the food will be enough drinks at least to a large extent some people will still enter, I can guarantee. Some people will come with twins, they will give the two children food, <laughs> you know, but it just kind of helps you manage, manage the number. Then, um, what other thing about invitation cards that, that really stood out for me, strictly by invitation that really stood out for me? Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. So, the final thing I'll be talking about today is expectations. You have to manage your expectations. Stop. Don't think that someone somewhere is going to help you, sincerely. Just leave it open to God. And say, Spirit of God, I commit this wedding into your hands. I commit you to raise up financiers for me. I commit you, I, I trust you to, to bless me. That's it. The Lord himself raised up people for you. I've had people that I told really early, because my men are like, ah, a lady. Oh, yeah, kill a lady. He, what? More dear, what? Meaning, they did not even come for the wedding. They didn't come. So, there was no point. And there were some people that I didn't even know. I, I mean, I had told them. But in fact, there was one that just swiped online. I pressed a call. And the next thing she said was, send me account details. What's up? So imagine, some persons, you are putting them way up there like, ah, oh, let me tell them beforehand. Say, so, you know, not they won't show. And some other persons that you think they won't do anything to amaze you. So the most important thing is, Lord, send this me help us to me. I don't expect anything from anybody. But I trust you to meet my needs. You see that prayer? God knows it. At this point, I hope you've been able to learn a whole lot about planning your wedding. If you have questions, if you have anything you want to talk about, do well to comment and um, ask your questions. And if you want professional counseling sessions, especially regarding your love life, do well to book a session at um, the T H E D O A S L at gmail.com. Love you guys. Once again, I am Esther Ayoba. I like to call myself the daughter of the king, wife of the king, and of course, a king maker. Have a wonderful day today. Bye.